Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Premier can't deny responsibility for his cuts to the health care system. We know that he is concerned about the money, and he is forgetting about the people his cuts affect. Yep. We've heard of the tens of millions of dollars the Premier ordered RHAs and cancer care uh, to, to cut from their budgets. We've now also learned that the Premier, the stroke of the pen, at the highest level, was directing the millions of cuts to our health care system. Information obtained through a FIPA request shows all major proposals for cuts were sent to the Priorities and Planning a Committee of Cabinet for approval. The Premier has decided whether urgent care centres would stay open wow. or closed, oh whether cancer care would eliminate positions, whether EMS stations would close. The Premier needs to tell Manitobans directly. Does he take responsibility for the millions in health care cuts he ordered across the right province? On. The Honourable First Minister. Gladly accept responsibility along with my colleagues on this side of the House for fixing a broken system if the member opposite here, here. will take responsibility here. for breaking it. Here, here, here. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition on a supplementary question. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. We now know that the Premier and his inner circle was making these cuts. It wasn't health care professionals. It wasn't uh, management. It wasn't experts. It was the Premier and his senior political staff. To lay out the case, I'm going to table a series of documents here, though we have the Premier's words on the record uh, today. This document showed that starting in February, tabling it now, that uh, the province ordered $83 million in cuts to the Winnipeg Regional Health Authority. The WRHA was ordered to send these cuts to a task force for review. Now we've learned because of this new document that the task force then sent these cuts to the Priorities and Planning oh, Committee of head? Cabinet. The Premier is the head of PNP. Oh. So the paper trail is clear. The Premier has directed the cuts of tens of millions of dollars from the health care system, meaning fewer emergency rooms, fewer health care aides, and fewer services around the province. We know that the Premier is accepting responsibility for these cuts, but how much did patient care factor into his decision-making process? Great. The Honourable First Minister. I appreciate that the member is now just at a beginning his learning curve, Madam Speaker, and educating himself on the processes of government. Uh, I appreciate the fact also that he understands that we are investing over uh, $500 million more in this fiscal year in our health care system than the previous NDP administration ever invested in the health care system. And I also appreciate the fact that the same processes that uh, work to break the system were followed by the previous administration that we are now using to fix it. Madam Speaker, all that being said, the system was broken, the system was unsustainable, the system had the worst record of any uh, evaluated by the Canadian Institute for Health Information. It was 10th, dead last under the previous administration. And the disagreement we have fundamentally, uh, the member opposite and I, is this. We think that we should fix it, and he thinks it should stay broken. Yeah. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition on a final supplementary. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, the disagreement is that we believe that we should invest in keeping Manitobans healthy at home by making further investments in pharmacare, mental health services in the community, and primary prevention so that we can make more investments in acute care services. What we dis disagree with the Premier about is that we are not going to cut our way out of the challenges. So we've established the chain of command. We have uh, identified who directed these decisions. But what was underlying the rationale for these cuts? From the outside, it appears as though it was a secret KPMG report on health care. Now, we know that the Premier and his political staff are focused on the money. But what about patient care? The Premier has been uh, unclear in the House to date on this matter. Mm -hmm. So can he explain to Manitobans clearly how did he take patient care into account when he made his decision to cut? Yeah. 
The Honourable First Minister. Perhaps the member would like to reflect for a moment on how the previous administration took patient care into account when they doubled our provincial debt over a six-year period. Perhaps he'd like to take into account the reality that borrowing a billion dollars to provide Order. that borrowing a billion dollars and running a deficit which is what was handed to us the year after that government left. That borrowing a billion dollars means that someone else has to pay it back plus interest, and that would be our children and grandchildren. Arguing against sustainability, Madam Speaker, is what the member opposite is doing. We want to make our health care system work better. We want to make it sustainable, and we will, by listening to the experts and acting on their advice, something the previous administration failed to do, Madam Speaker, and placed our health care system bottom of the barrel, dead last, while doubling our provincial debt on the backs of our children and grandchildren. Okay. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition on a new question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. So again, I was asking for an indication of how the Premier took patient care into account, and he responded with talk of debt and deficit and money, which is all that we've heard in his answers in this half Order. of session. So we've seen this government's plan for cuts, and the only evidence that we have seen so far is that it is hurting families in Manitoba. That's right. Patients are being hurt and will no longer be able to access physiotherapy yep. after surgery. Families are being hurt who will no longer be able to travel with a relative to receive care. And it's also hurting women who can no longer uh, access the Mature Women's Centre for advanced diagnoses of life-threatening ailments. What evidence did the Premier base his decision-making on? Will the Premier show us the evidence on which he bases his cuts? And where is the evidence that his plan won't make things worse? Right on. Right. The Honourable First Minister. I would uh, be forced, Madam Speaker, by the naive preamble of the member opposite to remind him that we pay for health care. Oh, we also borrow money to pay for health care, thanks to the mess we were handed by the previous administration. And that money has to be paid back in the form of tax dollars taken from working families, taken from struggling small businesses, taken from Manitobans. So, Madam Speaker, Unless he thinks the money comes from a money tree or is going to be delivered by a fairy godmother or comes from a rainbow someplace or a unicorn, he's missing the reality that people have to pay for health care somehow. Right. Madam Speaker, the difference between the member and his colleagues opposite and us is that we understand that health care needs to be delivered tomorrow too, that it needs to be delivered next year too. And we understand that making it sustainable is a worthy goal and we will make it sustainable while making the necessary half a billion dollars of additional investment this year alone, more than the NDP ever did. Here. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition on a supplementary question. Thank you, Madam Speaker. If the Premier took the time to talk to health care professionals here in Manitoba, he would hear them say that when we invest in keeping people healthy at home, we save money on health care long term. When we invest in mental health, primary prevention and pharmacare, we save money long term. When we cut, cut, cut today, that only costs us more in repeat hospitalizations and visits to the emergency room down the line. Right on. Now, the Premier's plan for health care cuts in the province seems to be directed by this KPMG report on health care. We've asked to see this. The minister in charge uh, said that revealing this report would confuse Manitobans. It would be too much for Manitobans to handle. But we think that they deserve to see what directed this decision-making process. Will the Premier release the KPMG health report today? The Honourable First Minister. Well, Madam Speaker, again, I recognize that the member wants uh, Manitobans to wait. He said so. He wants Manitobans to wait for health care reform because it scares him, frightens him, and he's using that fear within himself to try to frighten Manitoba health care workers, Manitoba families, Manitoba patients. But, Madam Speaker, it is that fear which will stand in the way of progress, I know, because the previous government was afraid to make those changes. They were afraid to make the changes that they were advised to make by experts that they themselves hired. 
Uh, the price of doing the same old thing, said uh, former President Bill Clinton, the price of doing the same old thing is far higher than the price of change. Madam Speaker, we accept the challenges of change. The members opposite clearly do not. That's why we're in government. We'll act to improve the health system. The Honourable Leader of the Official Opposition on a final supplementary. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And to also uh, paraphrase Bill Clinton, to those Manitobans who disagree with this Premier's cuts to health care, I feel your pain. <laughs> Now, we know that these cuts are being based on the KPMG Health Order. Review. Now, the other KPMG report that we have seen, which focused on controlling costs in departments other than health, uh, was all about uh, the money, which suggests to the average Manitoban watching from the outside that the KPMG report on health was also focused on controlling costs, too. We think the quality of care that somebody gets when they go to the hospital should come first. And we also believe that the Premier should show which guides his decision-making process to the average Manitoba. We don't need to wait. That's what the Premier says. So don't wait. Reveal the report that KPMG authored on yeah. health to Manitobans right. today. Yeah. The Honourable First Minister. Well, I'll let the member's own personal record demonstrate his compassion, Madam Speaker. He says he feels Manitobans' pain, but that's not what we're here to do. We're here to address their pain, to reduce it, to solve it, not to just feel it. And so, Madam Speaker, compassion is not simply mouthing the words of sympathy. It's acting. It's acting to make a system work that was broken. It's acting to shorten wait times that were far too long. It's acting to reduce ambulance fees that were far too high. It's acting to give people the test results so that cancer is at stage one when they get the answer back, not stage three, Madam Speaker. This is action that demonstrates compassion. Those are empty words and platitudes, nothing more. Yeah.